Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Trying something new tonight. Yeah. So what you think? What's your opinion on I, this um, beverage? All right. I'm not a big fan of coffee. Yeah. Uh, and I have some complaints about what I had to do to get this anyway. <laughs> so, and I think there's a cat hair in my drink already somehow. Because they're flavor. everywhere. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, this is like almost the only thing left at our uh, ABC specialty shop here, which is the um, Alabama Beverage Control, for those of you that from elsewhere. Um, it is the State Control Liquor Board, and all booze bought in this state has to come through them. Yep, which means there are things that it's hard to get, um, and it's course always the good stuff <laughs> anything that's an allocated product almost difficult impossible. to get yeah. um luckily the the shop that's uh it's about 20 minutes from where i live um is the specialty shop here in the county yeah so uh at least it goes there and they ha- historically they have just like put things out as they got them yeah so i I just had the ABC store plugged into my phone. <laughs> and so on Wednesdays when their delivery trucks Truck would arrive, yeah. um, I would call them and say, hey, did you get any allocated product today? And if they got something good, then I would make it a point to go down there. Yeah. And if they didn't, then I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, something something's changed here in the last couple of years anyway, yeah. um, that there is uh, more of a recognition of better whiskey i guess maybe around here i I don't know it's hard to say i think it actually is related to that bar that opened up in fairhope the whiskey ah the whiskey yeah you know the fancy whiskey bar um and so people are like oh now i've heard of this thing i i guess because i used to be able to go down there and i could buy like i could the truck would come in on wednesday i could go in on friday or saturday and buy a couple of bottles of like willet yeah, pot yeah, still, right. right? Yeah. And then, um, you know, a month later, I could go back in and buy another bottle. Like, there would still be some It'd on the shelves. It'd still be there, yeah. Not um, anymore. Last couple of years, they also switched to, instead of just putting things out as they arrived, they would put everything out at once. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think last year was the first time that they did that. So, they announced the date. Yeah. This is the day that we're going to have all the fancy stuff. Yeah. And so, people lined up. Camped out in front of the ABC store. Yeah. Mostly to get in so they could get the Peppy Van Winkle. Yeah. Which I've never tried myself. But I've actually heard that it's really not that exceptional. That <laughs> I haven't had it personally yet, but I know someone who has a bottle of it. Yeah. And that we are going to, I'm going to try it. Mm. All right. So. You said we first. Does that mean yeah. that I get to take part in this or no? You can absolutely take part. Okay. He's already opened the bottle, so I mean, we could probably drive to this house tonight and try it. Oh yeah. I don't know if tonight's a good night. <laughs> no, maybe but... it's not a good night. <laughs> but it could happen though. All right. Well, that's that's good to know. Yeah. Um. So last year, they it was like a normal day, like a normal Wednesday, I think. Yeah. Um, truck arrived. They knew the truck was going to arrive with all the stuff. They put everything out there. People camped out the night before, to, yeah. so that they could be the first people in, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Well, I went down there on my lunch break because I'm not fighting with people. <laughs> not that much of a people person. Uh, yeah, no. I, well, I mean, I'm I'm sure not camping out. I don't really want to stand in line outside the liquor right. store <laughs> yeah. on a Wednesday. <laughs> on a Wednesday. <laughs> uh, so I, I went down um, on my lunch break, and there was almost nobody there at that point. There was still a couple people trickling in and out, but the store wasn't packed. There was no line, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, I went in. I bought a couple of things. Uh, there was still some some stuff left over that I was like that I had some interest in. Yeah. Um, so this year they released it on Veterans Day. Yes, they did. So th- I think that was a problem already because, uh, I had to compete with everybody, not just the people that could get away from work in the middle of a Wednesday. <laughs> everybody could get away from work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I went down there on my lunch break and they had like, oh, and they also had a raffle for the first 150 tickets, the, the golden tickets yes. yep, this yep. year. So uh, like 150 this. people got tickets to get in first. Yeah. And then um, they gave out additional tickets. I don't know what they counted up to, to but yeah. whatever. Um, so that you could be next in line in front of people that didn't have a ticket at all, I guess. Yeah. 
So that was kind of silly and weird. Uh, better marketing, frankly. So I guess that's part of why they're doing this. Hey, go maybe. capitalism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go stay this on is, capitalism. <laughs> this, we'll get to this subject later, but that's exactly a problem. This is not capitalism. <laughs> stay on capitalism isn't the thing. No. Um, stay your own capitalism. Sure. So uh, I got down there on my lunch break, and there were literally like eight or ten bottles total. Really? of allocated product left when I got there. Really? And I guess what it is, people get in there and they um, maybe they went in there for something specific, maybe not, and they just like buy whatever's there. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, well, if you only get a few of these... Might as well pick one up. I guess up. I should get it. Yeah. And so anyway, I went in there and there, there was one thing that I was like, ah, well, I'll try it. So I got this Basil Hayden's Caribbean rye or whatever it's it, called. Caribbean rye. And it's got a little coffee flavor to it. It's I like it's it. It's okay. I'm impressed. I, I haven't really it, been that impressed with Basil Hayden's myself anyway. It's a very light whiskey. Yeah, it is, and that's part of the reason. I mean, I don't know. I like Basil Hayden's a lot, and it is a light flavor. It is funny, though. It seems to be every time I open a bottle of that, mm -hmm. I end up drinking the entire bottle. <laughs> well, don't do so that tonight. I'm not doing that here tonight, okay. probably. No. <laughs> But I prefer you not. Um, yeah, every time one of those bottles, I had to gets, fight for that bottle. I know, right? <laughs> not going to drink it all in one night, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, every time I've opened that bo a bottle of that at the house, it, it's usually not by myself, obviously. But a group of us normally kill that bottle. Yeah. Well, I'll tell so. you honestly. I mean, like this is okay. Uh, I mean, it tastes like really not much different than a bunch of coffee liqueurs that I've had. Really. Um, yeah. And uh, if I was going to pick a rye, I'd rather drink Rittenhouse than this. Hey, Rittenhouse is my favorite rye. And I wouldn't say I'd put this above Rittenhouse, honestly, yeah. to be truthful with you. And well, what's Rittenhouse? That's like a $20 bottle, Exactly. Right? <laughs> this is like half the price of, of this yeah. thing. So This is this is nice. It's something Maybe a third of the price. I can't remember what I paid for it. Yeah. It's, this is a nice change of pace, but I don't think this is something I would consider myself to drink regularly. Mm. I don't think I'd be... This wouldn't be a daily drink for sure, but it's a nice change of pace. Yeah. Yeah. For me. <laughs> I can tell by your face you, <laughs> you don't you don't agree. I'm I'm less impressed. <laughs> well, I like it. Uh now I think they make I think they grow coffee in Bolivia. How's huh? that for a second? Hey, there we go, segway. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, it. Because this isn't supposed to be a liquor review podcast. I don't know. It's turning it into <laughs> one tonight. <laughs> it, it gets to be a little bit of one from time to time. Yeah. I don't mind throwing that stuff in there, but absolutely. Um well, okay, so there's uh, craziness going on in Bolivia. Yeah. Right now, that's the big news that nobody's reporting. I was going to say, I, <laughs> well, you mentioned the other day we were going to talk about Bolivia. I didn't really get much time to do a whole lot of digging in like I needed mm -hmm. to, but it ain't popped up on mainstream at all. Yeah. Like nothing. Because I've, I've, I hadn't done any extra reading and stuff, but I've kept up with my mainstream stuff and it ain't mm -hmm. been there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's really similar to when we first talked about Venezuela. And it was yeah. like, well, nobody's talking about Venezuela. And, yeah. And then you know. for a while they were. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so. this is actually related in some ways, I think. Okay. So um, so here's the, here's the synopsis, as it were. Um, Evo Morales was, uh, has been the president through three terms. Okay. Um, that was the term limit until 2017. Uh, high court in Bolivia um, overturned that or upheld Reverse. that there would be no term limits. Okay. Um, so it gave him the opportunity to run for a fourth term. Yeah. Which he did. And he won the elections on October 20th yeah. this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, um, there were some irregularities okay. in that. Um, the, it, well, I guess the go to the end first and then backtrack. Um, the Organization of American States uh, yeah. determined that there were, quote, clear manipulations. Okay. And the reason they said that is because um, they found for, uh, high support for Eva Morales in the last 5% of counted votes. And it was inconsistent with the first 95% of counted votes. So, like, much higher support for Morales in the last 5%. There had yeah. been a little break. They counted like 84% of the vote, and it was close. Yeah. Um, and then when they released the rest of the vote, uh, it was a it was a clear victory for Morales. You have to win by 10% in um, 
Bolivia to avoid a runoff. Okay. Okay. So. So were they like thinking maybe there was some like ballot stuffing going on or? Yeah. Is that kind or, of what or, we're getting at? I, I suppose or some kind of manipulation, yeah. some way of, of uh, counting the votes differently or who knows. Yeah. Anyway, they're saying it's suspicious. Okay. All right. Um, and, but on the other hand, and this is the part you won't find in any media here in the U.S. at all, yeah. uh, the Center for Economic and Policy Research um, did their own study of the election as well. And they said that there were there was, quote, no evidence that irregularities or fraud affected the official result that gave President Evo Morales a first round victory. OK. OK. Um, and they said that the, the reason for the what appeared to be strange, this very different kind of um, result from the last little bit of votes than from the first part of the votes yeah. um, was uh, geographical, essentially, that Just, um, he has a lot of support outside of the cities yeah. and those are the places that took the longest to report their ah. results well, and so that's that would the make reason. that I mean that would yeah. make sense and I mean you see the same type thing in this country where you have different areas mm-hmm. swing different ways yeah you know? it's like if you counted um, all of the uh, um, all of the votes from middle America and then you threw in uh, New York, LA, Chicago, Atlanta, Detroit, etc. And <laughs> yeah. you're like, wait, and those wait, last little bit of votes that really <laughs> changed the results of the election. Well, yeah, I well, mean, the people course, they would vote differently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so it's the same kind of idea is what they're applying here. Okay. And uh, it is, I, I think, important to point out that the um, Center for Economic and Policy Research is an independent think tank. It, it is based in D.C., but it's an independent think tank. Yeah. Um, and the Organization of American States, if you don't know the history of that, um, was established um, during the Cold War specifically um, to uh, to limit the spread or halt the spread, really, I guess, of uh, socialist or communist type governments. Really? Um, and that the currently the U.S. provides more than half the funding for the OAS. Wow. Okay. And uh, Evo Morales is a, is a socialist. Um, he's a left wing anyway. Okay. Um, president and uh he is also still one of the few uh people in south america that supports uh nicolas maduro in venezuela and (laughs) so (laughs) now now things start coming together and there's been some talk about trying to get rid of this guy for a long time in the u.s that like he's he's he also very openly yeah he openly criticizes um u.s imperialistic type or interventions i suppose uh, at the u.n and er, interventions in south america at the u.n and so forth like he's very vocal critic of our foreign policy yeah all right so kind of like us yeah (laughs) yeah um cognitive dissidents maybe Uh, maybe. (laughs) Uh, so anyway, there's certainly reason to to think that everything is actually on the up and up. Yeah. But of course, immediately after the OAS made their uh, statement, um, you know, Pompeo jumped in and um, said he supports uh, new elections, um, but everybody involved with the current government should step down. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, Morales. By the way, Lil Marco is on board with this as well. Yes, he really. Um, okay. So, but then uh, uh, Morales said, "Well, I'm more than happy to redo the election um, yeah. if you want. So we can we can have new elections." Yeah. And uh, so In he four years, right? No, no, he meant um, <laughs> he, he meant, meant immediately. Yeah, yeah like yeah. okay, fine. Okay. I mean, I think that he's probably confident that the same result. That, that he, yeah, he <laughs> yeah. knows there wasn't any funny business. And, One way yeah. or another, I mean, if there yeah. was funny business, there'll he's be funny business in, again. Yeah, yeah right? in, in the same result as well. But <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, uh, so then that has created this um, series of events that led us to where we are right now, yeah. which is uh, that the military um, in Bolivia. Uh, got up and said, uh, we strongly recommend that Evo Morales resign his position, um, which he then did. Really? Yes. So he has stepped down. Yeah. Uh, Monday, I think, is when he stepped down. Okay. Um, he stepped down. Uh, his vice president stepped down. And um, the uh, president of their Senate also resigned. Uh, that is the line of succession in Bolivia, by the way. Okay. So the so, president, the vice president, the president of the Senate, 
Um, that's the line of succession, they and they all, all resigned. Okay. All right. Um, now, so what? Now, what brought the military to come to this conclusion? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, now, Morales even did it. Like so, the way the <laughs> the way the media is reporting it, and I, I'm going to give credit here to uh, the fairness and accuracy in reporting uh, site. Okay. Um, I read an article there. It was really interesting about this. They were talking about um, the how they selectively major media select, selectively uses the words that they do to kind of frame the story. Yeah. So um, in this case, uh, they're saying that um, that this is a resignation from Eva Morales, um, and they were comparing it to how in uh, in Chile they were talking about the protests, which you generally would get behind. You know, pro- people should be free to protest, right? Yeah. Um, but this is a uh, a guy in Chile that we that the U.S. supports, and so they're talking about the protesters in Chile. They're calling the Chilenos down there that are protesting uh, rioters. Ah, yeah. right. So we're we're using riot there. We're talking about resignation here. But the truth is, and you don't see this on the media anywhere either. Uh, Moreno, um, when he stepped down, or Morales, I'm sorry, Morales, when he stepped down, said uh, he was leaving to prevent additional violence. Um, and that was amid because after the they said that he should step down, yeah. they were arresting um, parliament members uh, that were in his party. Yeah. Um, there were attacks on party leaders. They were threatening journalists. Uh, they burned his residence. They burned some um, public buildings. Um, <laughs> so, there was, so this was this wasn't just like we think you should step down. We think you should step down, and we're going to start taking actions. <laughs> yes, yeah, that, that's how it went. Uh, there's uh, you know kidnapping and torture of um, of uh, political uh, oh, wow. people. You know um, specifically the mayor of Vinto, I think, is where it was. Um, they pulled this woman out. She's a big supporter of um, of Morales. Uh, they pulled this woman out. They this mob. Um, yeah. you know, cut her hair, uh, covered her in red paint and, um, you know, was demanding that she, um, that she denounce, you know, the party and Morales and all of this stuff and step down from office. Actually, I have to hand it to her. I don't agree with her politics, but she stood there and she said, um, I believe in these things and I'm willing to die for it. Really? Like she, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so I have respect for somebody like that, regardless of where you stand. I exactly. mean, if you're by your principles, you're by your principles. Exactly. So what we really have is a military coup though. It, it does sound that way. I mean, that's, I mean, I don't know what else you could really call what you just laid out. Yeah. I mean, it's the military uh, demands that the president leave office, yeah. um, starts taking violent action against members of the party and that president, yeah. um, and really deposed him. Yeah. Um, so when so, the military deposes a president, it's not exactly a resignation. Yeah. It's a that's coup. a coup. Yeah. Now, here's the problem, though. Well, yeah, what's their end game? It would be my question. Well, um, the U.S. doesn't support Morales, so they're happy yeah. with the result. Uh, the, um, um, I'm, sure a, the U- uh, I'm sure the U.S. is happy. Yeah, yeah. An opposition member stepped in, uh, Janine Agnes. Uh, she claimed the um, presidency, so she's acting president now. Yeah. Um, and uh, she's more of a... I don't want to say free market because that word's so misused. Actually, yeah. I would say it's probably more fascist. It's more on the right wing side. It's oh, I think oh, you're still totalitarian. Yeah, yeah, I think you're you're trading one type of of authoritarian regime for another. Um, yeah. You're trading a, a left wing in a left wing authoritarian regime in for a right wing authoritarian regime. Yeah. But anyway, um, the the problem is that if that the U.S. cannot provide aid to a coup government yeah so if they just avoid using the word coup (laughs) they can still provide aid. oh which is just as amazing to me yeah um it's kind of unreal now the really funny thing about this is that after all this trump released a statement that said uh that this is a quote significant moment for democracy in the western hemisphere And uh, he went on to say it sends a signal, it sends a strong signal to Venezuela and Nicaragua um, that the people won't be held down or something. I can't remember exactly, but but that's the point, I think. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. This is what we're really trying to say is like, yeah. look, you can only resist so long. We're, we're going to get our way. Exactly. Um, and if you have any questions uh, about it, then, uh, you know, USAID has been pumping money into there for like 15 years into Bolivia, um, yeah. opposition parties and so forth. Uh, the National Endowment for Democracy, which we've talked about we've way talked too many about. times. Yep. And if you haven't heard before, the National Endowment for Democracy is essentially the non-government organization that is funded by taxpayer money that is used to get around those pesky little things in foreign affairs like treaties. <laughs> Um, they are used to, uh, you know, create insurrection yeah. and help, you know, uh, usher in new governments, uh, regime much. changes yeah. worldwide. Um, but since they're not directly government employees, the U.S. government can't be held accountable even though the U.S. government funds them. It's, it's, yeah. And uh, they spent over a million dollars in Bolivia just last year. Wow. In, wow. In 2018. So. Um, I would say that there's a pretty strong possibility that just like in Venezuela, where our position is that we were involved all along, I think that the U.S. government is involved, or the intelligence services, however you want to look at it, yeah. has been involved in this as well. I would imagine. And uh, to add to that point, there was some leaked audio of um, four, uh, four or five former Bolivian military officers that were planning the coup. And um, all of them were grads at the School of the Americas at Fort Benning in Georgia. <laughs> Coincidence, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is, again, like a training ground for insurrection. Yeah. Uh, you Seems know, all, to be. all these military people come in from around the world. They get trained in the U.S. Um, and they these people that have been graduates of this program, these programs at Fort Benning, um, have been instrumental in overthrowing governments all over the place. Yeah. It's not unusual. Huh. Wow. So that's what's Just going on in Bolivia. So, so if you <laughs> if you've missed that in the news, yeah. That's what's happening. That's Um yeah. let's see. Is I'm trying to think if I've left anything out that I think is important. Yeah. Uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yeah, I can't think of anything. And as I glance over my notes here, I think I've pretty well covered it. Yeah. Um, so that was that was really the only big foreign policy thing I want to talk about. Um, I did mm. uh, see news today that you know months ago we talked about the ISIS bride uh, from Alabama. Yeah. Um, I saw today that the uh, um, a federal judge has ruled that she is not a citizen of the United States and so will not be permitted back into the country. Oh wow. Um, it was on some. You know, the, I rem we were saying at the time that there's questions about whether or not she was her father was still still had diplomatic status because he was a embassy personnel. Yeah. Um. So if her father still had diplomatic status at the time that she was born, because if he did, then she's not a U.S. citizen. But if he didn't, then she was. Yeah. Because she was born here. Um, the judge said that he did. He still had diplomatic status at the time of her birth, so she's not a citizen. Which is kind of interesting, though, because it meant that she lived like 20 years here illegally with her <laughs> dad, who was a naturalized citizen. Yeah, it's a little strange. Yeah, um, but, you know, whatever. Um, that is kind of some big news as Turkey has started uh, deporting all of these foreign ISIS fighters to their countries of origin. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, and people are not real happy. There's, like, some people without countries that are stuck... Like, um, I can't remember what country this one guy was from, but I heard uh, specifically about one particular guy who um, was uh, kicked out of Turkey, sent across to Greece, and that um, he didn't have a valid passport from wherever his original country was. Hmm. And so Greece wouldn't let him in and Turkey wouldn't let him back. So he's literally stuck in the, airport, in the border area. Or the border area? Oh, wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Between the fences. That's um, crazy. Yeah, so what was that guy how, supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how... Yeah, it's going to be like uh, that Tom Hanks movie. Did you ever see that Tom Hanks movie? <laughs> I didn't, but I think uh, I know which one you're talking about where he's stuck on the island. Yeah. Well, no. he No, you're thinking of Castaway. Yeah. I'm a, thinking, uh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah. No, it's the, it's the Terminal, I think. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Didn't yeah. see it, but I know what you're talking about Yeah, it was now. actually pretty entertaining yeah. um but the story there is that uh, he flew out of his country and while he was in flight his country fell 
Uh-huh. And it was no longer a country by the time he landed. Yeah. So his passport to enter the U.S. was no longer valid by the time he landed. So they wouldn't let him out of the airport. Oh, wow. Um, but he couldn't go back home because his home country didn't exist anymore. Wow. And so he's like stuck in the airport for months <laughs> and he has to learn how to get by. In the airport. In the airport, <laughs> you know, with no money and not being able to speak English and, <laughs> yeah, and so on and so on. Interesting. It, yeah, it was, it was actually a pretty entertaining film. Um so uh, we have that going on. Um, but the other thing I wanted to talk about was just uh, like your experience or some of the things that people were saying to you uh, when you were wearing your taxation as theft shirt the other day. Yeah. And I the a... reason I found this interesting is because um, I had a, a discussion with my cousin um, a few months ago and we were, he, we were talking about discrimination and I was yeah. making the point that I think that, well, I, you know, I think it's abhorrent. I think it's absurd uh, that I do, however, believe that people should be able to discriminate on whatever basis they want yeah. um, a, as an employer, particularly freedom or specifically. Is, freedom is freedom. Yeah. It's a freedom of association. You, yeah. The government should not be able to force you to interact with somebody that you don't want to interact with. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I, while I said I thought it was a stupid plan, I said that I think that em- employers should be able to hire or fire or not hire um, anybody they want based on any attribute they choose. So if you don't like Greek people um, and you refuse to hire any Greeks, then oh, oh well, the government yeah. shouldn't have any say in that. I think it's a it's a poor long-term decision because you might be missing out on some of the best people for the positions and then they go and work for your competition. Exactly. You know, so, uh, you know, it's it's self-limiting, I think, in a lot of ways. And the truth is that the the... Um, chance for profit kind of tends to outweigh any kind of uh, prejudice that people have in the long run. Exactly. Um, but uh, he kept coming back to me and he said, well, I, I get that with private employers, but what about uh, government employers? Like, government shouldn't be able to discriminate. Mm-hmm. And, like, I kept getting caught because I wasn't really sure how to answer because my real answer is, <laughs> well, I know what it, your answer in is. my <laughs> ideal world, there would be no government employees. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew you were fixing the guy there. Yep. <laughs> so I, I I wasn't sure how to deal with that problem. And, and it when you were talking about telling me about your um, conversations when you were wearing that T-shirt the other day, uh, I was thinking about that and realizing like how buried people are in this status paradigm that yeah. they can't imagine, like they, they can't separate themselves from it at all. At all. Like yeah. there there is no imagination of a world without a government that yeah. provides whatever. Yeah. Well, and that was the thing I ran into wearing the shirt. So I had on my taxation of that shirt and I got all kind more than normal. I wear that shirt quite a bit. And for whatever reason, people were into that shirt the other day. Maybe I was just out in public more. I don't mm-hmm. know. But, um, a lot of people came up and talked to me about it. And, um, and it was a weird thing. Like everybody that would come up, they'd be, they would agree. They'd be like, Oh, you're so right. Taxation is theft, blah, blah, blah. But then they would immediately go into whatever government program they thought couldn't exist without taxation. Yeah. And I just found it ironic. I don't know that mm-hmm. that's, that's the next place they go. Oh, yeah. Taxation is theft, but we got to have. Social services. We gotta have like welfare. We gotta have the government funded arts was one of them actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, so uh, it just seems strange to me that that's that. And mm-hmm. and I get it because you just you got to look at it through the eyes of this is it's always been this way for at least mm-hmm. our as far as mm-hmm. we know you know. Um, and it's you just it's hard to see everything being the way it is without having the government doing it because we're so used to government doing it. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that you have to wake people up to the history. Yeah. And, you know, at, at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the 20th century, um, the federal government was like between one and 2%, I think of GDP in this country, there was no income tax, like zero income tax. Um, everything that the government collected, it collected as small tariffs uh, at the border. Um, there was no Department of Education. There was no interstate highway system. Yeah. There was like none of these things existed. None of the big and, and bureaucracy was, that's there now was yeah. there. And, and it wasn't all these regulations limiting um, various things in the economic sphere. And there were certainly significant differences between the very very rich and the very poor. Um, yeah. But 
like you, you, they talk about the robber barons now. Yeah. I, now I kind of wish I'd like read up a little bit on uh, Rockefeller and Carnegie and all these guys um, so that I could get my company straight and what have you. But right. the uh, those guys actually improved the standard of living for the entire country by a significant percentage. Yeah. Um, I, I remember reading something like uh, – that the uh, they used whale oil before they started using kerosene and so forth. Like this was a development during that time period. Yeah. Um, from Standard Oil or whoever, yeah. and uh, and the price uh, dropped significantly. It was the first time really in history that um, that your average person or your poor person could stay up after dark and like read <laughs> and, and do something productive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and things like that. Uh, the price of steel dropped to like three or four cents on the dollar of what it had been at the beginning of this. Like these guys made a tremendous amount of money, these industrialists, yeah. but they improved the, the standard of living for everybody in this country by a significant amount. Imagine the difference if like, I don't know, what, what's some product that you, if the, if the cost of plastics yeah. went from a dollar per pound or whatever to three cents per pound yeah. in the next 20 years. Like, how would that improve your standard of living? Yeah. Like, how many more things could you buy? Because plastic goes into everything. Everything. So you're talking about the price of everything just, like, dropping. Yeah. Like, and and this created the opportunity for the, the big sky rises and so forth, the huge development in the cities in the U.S. Because before that, you couldn't afford it. There's too much steel. Yeah, yeah. But when steel suddenly became four cents on the dollar or what it had been before, yeah. like, now you can afford to build these buildings. Yes. Yeah. Now you can. It, it changes everything. It's a game changer. Cool. Let me also point out that, that uh, the wealth that was created during that time period yeah. um, between the Civil War and World War I. Yeah. Um, the That's wealth the, that was created in this country during that time period, no kind of growth like that. That that growth has never been matched ever in the history of the world before or since. Well, and I would also argue that, that we're kind of standing on the backs of that now. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, we wouldn't be where we're – I mean, we've, we've went a total another direction. But the only reason we're able to sustain and do what we do now is because of that time period mm -hmm. where we had that, that huge growth and opportunity. Yeah. I mean, we're working our way to a point where we can't continue to, uh, you know, uh, propel ourselves off the backs of those industrialists during that time. Yeah. Um, you know, what was it that Margaret Thatcher said? Eventually you run out of other people's money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, literally half of my income goes to the government in some form or another. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Exactly. You know, and that that's coming from a time. Oh, another thing that I came across recently. This is only kind of tangential, but um, is that the uh, the tax brackets yeah. haven't changed in like in dollar amounts since like the '60s, okay. or maybe it was the '50s. I can't remember. No. Now, <laughs> just think about how much inflation there's been since that time. Yeah. Um. I mean, you're talking about. Uh, gold was twenty five dollars an ounce then, and it's fifteen hundred now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so a tremendous amount of inflation during that time. So if you were in the, I don't remember what exactly what the tax brackets are, but yeah. if you were in the thirty to sixty thousand dollar tax bracket in nineteen sixty four or whatever, like yeah. you were doing pretty good. Yeah. Now, if you're in the thirty to sixty thousand dollar tax bracket now. I mean, it's that same amount of money, but that money isn't the same no, amount. No, <laughs> that money is not the same at all, yeah. Like, they haven't adjusted during all this time. So, yeah. we have all floated higher into higher and higher tax brackets without mm -hmm. any real change in our income. Yeah. Or, if anything, a reduction in our income. Yeah. Well, and and I think people are feeling that more and more now. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I think the I think that's a big part of what's going on with the economy is you're feeling that pinch more and more and more. Yeah. I think about what people were able to do. I mean, um, you know, there's plenty of stories. I, I don't have them directly in my family, uh, but I mean, I've heard plenty of stories of, you know, people's grandparents where uh, the the grandfather was um, just like a, a carpenter or right. you know something like that. Um, you know, a blue collar job. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, and was able to support on that one job his wife, and like eight kids. I, yeah, I was going to say a busload of kids, yeah. Because right. that's how they did it back then. Yeah. And now, 
most families, it seems like at this point, need two jobs to support the two of them and one kid. And one kid, yeah. No, and that's absolutely true. You really can't make it without both both people working, at least not in, like you say, blue-collar type jobs. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, if, if depending on what you're doing. Yeah, um, I uh, one of my favorite stickers on the uh, uh, Scott Horton's old um, business, the Liberty stickers, Yeah. one of my favorites there is... Um, the dollar's not. Uh, what, how's it go? Um, well, dang! Now I can't remember it. No. Uh, talk for a moment. I'll come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll come back uh, around. Um, he says, uh, "Things don't cost more. Your money's just worth less because the government's been counterfeiting." Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's absolutely true. And it's crazy that you mention that because, mm-hmm. yeah, the government will make a big deal of, about catching some counterfeiter or whatever. Mm-hmm. That, oh, you know, he's stealing from all of us because it's making the money less valuable. <laughs> yeah, but, but here they, adding but zeros. Here they the, are just literally yeah. adding zeros to mm-hmm. ledgers, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what are some of the specific things that people brought up um, to you? Like I say, the, one of the specific ones was the government-funded arts. That's the one yeah. that jumps out at me is that you know can't get can't get by without the government funded I, that these arts wouldn't exist that like uh, without the government involved. Well, the Renaissance happened. I was well, and that's <laughs> you know I, now there was uh, courts funding arts some in that case too, but uh, yeah. you know um, wealthy mercantilists and so forth. We're yeah. also funding arts. Yeah. Um, it wasn't just government arts. People yeah. always have an interest in aesthetics. Like yeah. beauty draws people. If you're, yeah, if you are good, yeah. people will recognize it and people will pay you. Well, and I just and that was one that kind of stuck with me, just because I can't envision like. I I am completely against government funded arts, like in every way. It just feels like that's something that the government absolutely should not have its hands in. Yeah, I agree. Like, and that's something to me. It's the easiest one to make an argument for the the market will provide. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot easier to make the argument for the market providing arts mm-hmm. than it is for roads. Yeah. I mean, now I think that you can have roads without a government, but I think Ooh. the argument for it is a lot more difficult yeah. to make than it is for arts like i mean there's these people are creative people will create creative things yeah they just will (laughs) yeah um i did see some quote somewhere uh, that was something along the lines of um i don't paint for money i paint and people pay me you know something like that absolutely Um, you know and uh i I paint for myself essentially and other people are willing to give me something for it um i I actually think it's the other way around though honestly i think it's easier to make the uh make the argument that government shouldn't be funding roads than it is for government shouldn't be funding (laughs) arts really um because art's kind of this superfluous unnecessary thing um that doesn't necessarily create demand in the market um but roads absolutely create demand in the market. Like, they if, do. You, if you have a store, you want your customers to be able to get there. And yeah. that creates some incentive yeah. for you to maybe make a transportation line between your store and your customers. Yeah. It's just hard to envision, though, the cooperation needed. And I'm not saying it couldn't happen and couldn't mm-hmm. exist. I'm not making that argument at all. It's just, it's hard, especially for people that aren't in this mindset to envision how the cooperation would come together to get those roads in the places they need to be mm-hmm. where they need to be. And I, like I say, I mean, I think toll roads would be a big part of that. I think you'd have yeah. a lot of toll roads where, you know, you just pay to use. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it went, removed the government from that situation. And I'm actually okay with toll, toll roads. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I am completely against toll roads for, that the government is yeah, providing. You because I've collected already, my taxes. Yeah, and I've already paid them. for this. Like, don't, that's like, yeah, horrible. Well, um, I, I think that that's, uh, I, I agree with you. But I think that the cooperation is easy to put together. And I yeah. think that generally speaking, the, now I said, you know, you have a story you want to create a line of transportation between you and your customers. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think it's the businesses themselves that are creating those roads. Yeah. I think so, there's, you know, some kind of specialist company 
that you would contract out to create the road. Yeah. Um, or that would see a need and like jump in there first yeah. and build the road and, and make it a toll road that connects I, people and, I, and, and things. And I think that's what you um, would, I think in the end, that's what you'd end up with is yeah. you'd end up with a lot of roads like that, that were toll roads. Yeah. I mean, the interstate system didn't exist until the, the 60s, right? Something like um, that, yeah. and, uh, and it was really built so that we could transport nukes from place to place. <laughs> right. Well, we got to get these things across the country somehow. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, there were plenty of roads, and there's still yeah. plenty of private roads. Yeah. Um, not as many as there would be if the government wasn't out there building them everywhere. But in most yeah. cases, the government has just like taken over a private road. Like yeah. all the roads that are out there right now, they weren't all built by the government. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they may be government roads now, but they yeah. weren't always. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, another one that I hear a lot is the schools. And yeah. I, I think that that's, that's just a bizarre argument. And that's, because, the, that's the one, that if I had like a choice, mm-hmm. that would be at the top of getting around the government schools. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Me too. Um, now, here's the, the idea that if government wasn't providing schools, kids wouldn't be educated is just inane to me. Um, and I would say to each of you that thinks that, just think for yourself. Um, if there were no government schools, would yeah. you get your kids educated still? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And would your parents have gotten you educated still? Yeah, absolutely, without question. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. The, the, there, there will still be schools. They just mm-hmm. won't be managed through the government. Right. And you'll have more of a variety of what kind of school you want your kid to go to. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, everybody kind of just hits, not everybody. I mean, plenty of people use private schools. But the majority of people kind of just hit the button and send them to public school. I've been working on an article on this, so I don't want to give it all away. All right. (laughs) Um, But the other thing is that it creates a lot more freedom uh, for individual students in their education. Yeah. Uh, The problem, you know, one of the big problems with government schools, like even within a single school, yeah. Um, one of the big problems with government schools is it does this one size fits all kind of education. Everybody has to go down the same path and learn the same sets of things. Yeah. And what you end up doing is that you slow down to the lowest common denominator um, so that nobody can accelerate in anything. And what you would get more in private schools is people to have the ability to say if they're if they have really strong math skills and really weak verbal skills that they can focus on math. Yeah. They can focus on the thing that they could maybe make a career out of. Yeah. Um, and not have to worry so much about the other thing. Yeah. Um, and instead, what they get now is this kind of generalized, not very good at anything education. Yeah. You, d- you yeah. end up with no masters. You end up with like a jack of all trades. But even that is below par. Well, and, and that's just like a, a high school diploma isn't really worth that much. Mm. I mean, it's it sucks if you don't have one. But to be truthful with you, it doesn't really get you anywhere when you do have one. Yeah. You know? Well, the college degree doesn't really mean anything either, Anymore. except that you finish it. Yeah. Um, the uh, it doesn't matter what your degree is in. Yeah. Like you even get to specialize some, and yeah. and for most careers, it doesn't matter what that specialty was. Yeah. It just like did you get it? Does, does yeah. it have the stamp on it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know that's all it takes. Yeah. Um, well, and I think you'd find if you do away with public schools, you find that there'd be a lot more focus on trades. Yeah. Which is where I think the focus should be anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all good. I mean, I get colleges and that you need, that there is there is a need for all of that. But not every person on this planet needs to go to college. They just don't. We need people that can do other things, you know. Plumbing, Plumbing. electrician, yeah. welding. Yeah. All kinds. There's plenty of other stuff to do. And, and those things are important. And they're becoming more and more valuable because nobody does because them anymore. Because nobody does them anymore. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I was thinking about a few other things. What else were people confronting? Um, the the other big one I got was, um, I guess, like SNAP or EBT, like for people who aren't able to provide for themselves or who, you know. Oh, is this um, food programs or yeah, something like that? Yeah, okay. yeah. I had a lady confront me about that. Mm-hmm. And, and like I say, same thing. Like she was all for, oh, yeah, taxation and stuff. But, you know, we got to make sure we take care of people who can't take care of themselves. Through, with stuff like that. And my my answer to that is what makes you believe that government is required to do that? Yeah. Well, and that's – I think we've talked about that on the podcast mm-hmm. here before. and and But it's worth repeating, you know. Yeah. I mean that's – people will still provide for people who can't take care of themselves. Yeah. I mean do you try and help people that need help when you can? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, me too. And, and, and most people do. And mm-hmm. it's 
it's it's actually a better system and gets stuff to people who need it better than the government can. Yeah. And that's yeah. and that's the argument that I would make is that the government doesn't provide these services well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like they do, so. Yeah. Uh, what you end up with is this kind of um, nameless, faceless thing where the people take advantage of the system whereas mm-hmm. if you if your community is providing if your neighbors are providing they know what you've done to put yourself in this situation yeah um or and they know if you're taking if you're selling drugs and not reporting <laughs> any of the income but still collecting welfare you know that kind of thing and that's too. and that's a funny one that you mentioned because you know i work in retail and i see those situations yeah. like i mean i like i do like i, I witness that stuff like that all the time of the mm-hmm. just the abuse that goes on and i say abuse but but situations just like what you're saying like the ebt is just kind of bonus on top of the drug money mm-hmm. you know and it's you know and i ain't trying to judge nobody about anything i mean they're just taking advantage of a system as far as i'm concerned yeah i mean a system I'd, that shouldn't exist in the first that place. i believe shouldn't exist yeah. so i mean i don't really even fault them that much for it but mm. but it goes on yeah you know yeah. i don't even think it's a huge percentage but it, it's, it's not, still something that it's happens. not a huge percentage but it i like i say mm. i mean i've seen enough of it to know it it's yeah. that's not like a made up thing yeah. like, that goes on well the the point though is that um that if you a government doesn't actually know the individuals involved. Yeah. When people are giving charity, they know who they're helping. Yeah. And they know if those people really need help or not. Yeah. Um, it, it becomes a, a, a thing where everybody knows everybody. And your communities are stronger that way, too. Yeah. Well, and that's something that I think is being lost more and more is a sense mm-hmm. of community. Yeah. Even, even here where we live, I mean, it's, it's just – it's. I don't know. It's just different from what... It's definitely different from what it used to be. Yeah. I don't really know my neighbors. Me either. I mean, barely. I mean, I've talked to them a half a dozen mm-hmm. times. Yeah. In 10 years. More yeah. than 10 years. <laughs> I've been here. I've been here like eight years. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean... Um, well, I mean, it's unfortunate. The To get back to the point, though, try and break yourself out of this status paradigm where you believe that the government is essential to provide these services. And just try and think every time you, you think about one of these things that you're like, oh man, that couldn't happen without the government. Just think about how it could happen without yeah. the government. Because it can, whatever it is. And I'll, I'll, grant, I'll guarantee you in, in almost all scenarios, it'll be provided better without the government. Yeah. Like you will end up with a better product in the end. Yeah. Um, there was, I, I wish I'd brought my... Uh, my little quote book in here, because um, there's a, a good one about that. It says, um, you know, that the uh, the government um, can only provide services that individuals can, usually at a uh, um, less efficiently and at greater cost. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, My favorite one, and I'll, I'll butcher it, but is, um, you know, if if the government started teaching kids how to walk as mm-hmm. soon as they're able to uh, of age to walk mm-hmm. within a decade. If we we would be like, well, we can't. Kids won't walk. If, if we, they'll never learn to walk without the government yeah. teaching them. And and you know that's, but that's the way we look. Once you, and that's kind of the point I was making earlier is we've all we've. This is what all we've known mm-hmm. is is just big government. Yeah. And so you have to kind of break yourself out of that mind frame of you know there there is other ways to do these things. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. For thousands of years. Yeah. Without a giant federalized government, yeah. people were able to build roads to the places that they needed, yeah. provide for the people who needed it, educate their children. Yeah. Like all of these things happened without the intrusiveness of government. Yeah. And it could happen again. Yeah. And, you know, I think in most cases, history would show um, that government has done a poorer job of all of those things than communities did before. Yep. I would absolutely agree. Except maybe the Romans. They were kind of awesome. Oh, yeah. Were, were they good? <laughs> they did good roads anyway. <laughs> they were good till the end, right? <laughs> but actually what they did was they just paved over existing roads for the yeah. most part. So it's not even like they really built the roads. They just made it a better road because they, they just had improved the system. more engineering. Yeah, yeah. Higher engineering skills. But uh, anyway. All right. Well, I mean, I guess that's as good a place as any to end. Um, I'm, I have actually been working on a few articles kind of from time to time. I've been yeah. like really sick for about a week and a half. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> so, happy we were able to do this tonight because yeah. when I called you earlier today, I was like, man, there's like a 50, 50 shot. He's going to tell me not tonight. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of, I began to feel back to normal yesterday. 
Oh, and that's so, awesome. Um, and so here we are. I'm, I'm not having to take any pills. Uh, I'm like up all day. I even worked out this morning. Hi. It it hurt because I hadn't <laughs> because you hadn't done it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but uh, but you know, it got done. You're and uh, so yeah, more or less back to normal. Nice. And um, and hopefully it'll will remain that way until next time. Uh, when we finally get this right. In the meantime, um, follow us on Facebook and subscribe on iTunes or Podbean. Uh, share, like, um, comment, yeah. tell your friends, yeah. all those other things that we hey, usually say. I will say this for the if, there may be some people that encountered me in my shirt the other day listening because I did try to tell everybody that that commented and made said something about the shirt. Mm-hmm. I have a podcast where we discuss all of these things. Yeah, I've so. missed that opportunity more than once. I'm, I'm, I got to be I'm, better about it. Yeah, well, it, it it occurred to me mid in, throughout the day. It's like I, every time somebody talks to me about this shirt, I'm mentioning the podcast somewhere in the conversation. I'm mentioning the podcast. Yeah, check so, out the Liberty Mike. So if if any of y'all are tuning in, I appreciate y'all, and I hope y'all come back. I hope y'all feel like you learned something. Yeah. Um, sometimes we're a little better structured. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we're not. Like, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> kind of so how it we goes. We don't have a script. No. <laughs> You're yeah. definitely just kind of yeah. talking. Absolutely. And the, the real crazy thing is that while I have some notes here, yeah. um, like this is what going to dinner with us is like. Yeah. This is absolutely <laughs> we, what we it's like. We go out drinking and this is what it becomes. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of how we got this started. If you're interested and you're in the area, contact us. Come out yeah. drinking with right, us yeah. on Tuesdays. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, but yeah, in in the meantime, try and stay free. Right. Train how you fight. Whatever I say. Ciao. Later. <laughs>